Do you want to know how security researchers and SOC analysts, blue team defenders, share indicators of compromise and quickly find malicious files on their network? In today's episode, we are going to be breaking down what a YAR rule is and how you can use it to effectively detect malware in your environment. Coming up. YAR rules have been around for quite a while and basically they are a signature based detection that anyone can write to allow you to identify indicators of compromise and malicious files and really any file you want on your network and endpoints. Reverse engineering malware is taxing activity with packers and obfuscation, encryption. Uh, it can be really daunting. And, and by the way, like the skill of reversing malware isn't uh, trivial, right? So there's research labs, um, you know, people like large orgs like FireEye and Talos, um, they will reverse engineer malware that they've discovered and actually write YAR rules, right? That anyone can use and indicators of compromise. So let's take a look at actually what YAR rules are. What I want you to take out of this video is really understand A, what a YAR rule is, B, what the composition of it is, and C, how uh, professionals in the cybersecurity community are actually using YAR rules. And by the way, it's not a silver bullet, right? It's just another tool in the toolbox. Before we get into it, let me introduce myself. My name is Gerald Dozier. This is Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. And on this channel, sometimes we're talking labs and doing industry stuff. And sometimes we're just breaking it down and telling you these key skills that you should know about, like YAR rules. A special shout out to our uh, video sponsor this week, uh, the podcast We Talk Cyber with Monica. They just launched season two. Uh, seriously, consider checking it out. Uh, some good stuff uh, there. So Back to the YAR rule, we're going to get onto the computer and actually take a look at the composition. When you think of a YAR rule, just think of it as a simple matching kind of Boolean uh, logic matcher, right? It's either true or it's false. It either matches or it doesn't. And it's going to make a lot more sense when we actually take a look at it. Okay, so as a case study, let's just say that this black energy uh, APT attack in the Ukraine is something that you know, we want to be cognizant of, right? Or um, we're worried about it being on our network. People are asking, bosses are asking, what are we doing about black energy? Now, black energy is being seen as, a, it says APT here, but really it's an actual uh, Trojan. And, you know, it can be used for cyber espionage, denial of service attacks, et cetera, like that. Here is a YAR rule for black energy, okay? You can see it's being stored in this, um, you know, dark encode YAR rules in a GitHub, but it's forked from YAR rules, which we'll look at in a minute, okay? And you could see there's a very standard, we'll get into this in a second, but there's a very standard um, um, structure to a YAR rule, the way that it's built, okay? But you could see this one, the rule is called Black Energy BE2, right? It's got this metadata, which explains kind of who wrote it, Florian Roth, nice, from uh, Sigma, um, you know, fame. And it detects black energy to malware. Good. So this is the metadata, like the YAR rule. This is for the researcher. This is for you and I to understand where this came from and get more information, right? Um, now the strings, these are kind of variables that you're defining. Um, so when you do your detection, your Boolean logic later, uh, you'll use those strings. Now you can see for this black energy one, um, it is, um, by the way, import PE, so PE is um, portable executable, I believe. It basically means Windows binaries, okay? So um, you can see uh, variable MZ, this could have been variable foo or bar or whatever, but MZ, um, this is kind of the magic, um, the magic value for Windows uh, PE files, binaries, this 45A, you'll always see this at the beginning uh, in hex uh, at the top of uh, Windows files. Um, so these are just variables. You can see he just used S as kind of this uh, incremental thing. Um, it's looking for literally this full string. Uh, you can see there's some keywords here um, in red that we'll look at. It's looking for this string, this string, this string, this string, right? So 
you you see that it, it's like explicitly I you know looking for these explicit strings. Yes, the the black energy malware could have been rewritten to not have some of these things, but for the most part, I'm guessing based on the way it works, it needs to call this read process memory function and it needs to call this win help w function. So they can't rewrite that because that's that's literally the Windows function call, the OS operating system function call that the Black Energy is using. So they can't rewrite it, right? So now you can see the final part, and this is required for all YAR rules, is the condition. And this is like basically what it's testing on, right? So it says 45A at, at you know, basically um, memory reference zero, which makes sense, right? Because at the beginning of all Windows uh, PE files, DLLs or EXEs, you're going to have this 45A. It says file size less than 250K. So I guess um, Black Energy is a pretty lightweight piece of malware. Uh, the reason that I, I believe Florian did this is because that you could have legitimate um, Windows executables and stuff that do call these function calls and stuff, but uh, to kind of tamper down false positives, I assume that he did less than 250K and all of this. So like, you know, S1 is true, S2 is true, S3 is true, and S4 is true. So basically, if it's a Windows PE, it's less than this size, and it has all of these, uh, we're gonna flag it as black energy. Now, um, YAR is just going to tell you true or false, it was detected or not. It's not, it, this isn't AV, this isn't, you know, doing anything other than informing you, yes, in fact, there is a file on your disk um, that matches these variables, okay? So uh, hopefully you, you see this as an example. Um, obviously this, this has, hash could be um, a different, um, unless this hash is for the YAR rule itself. But um, okay, so now that we've kind of looked at an actual example of what a practical YAR rule is, um, and thank you, Florian, for that. Let's so this is a, another example. This one's much, much simpler than the, the Black Energy one we just looked at. And this is complements of malware bytes. But you can see, again, you've got this, like, you've got the rule and the rule name. Uh, rule name can be anything except I believe it can't start with a digit. Um, you've got metadata, which is basically for you and I to understand where this thing came from and what its purpose is. You've got your strings, which is the variables that we're defining. We've got some keywords here, um, and then you've got the condition, which is Boolean logic. If you're new to the field and you're not familiar with what Boolean logic is, I strongly encourage you spend a few minutes and look at it. Um, it's things like and, or, exclusive or, um, which is kind of a tricky one if you're not familiar with it. But basically, um, it means that the, the values have to all, uh, for and, they all have to uh, be true, or for or, only one of them has to be true. Um, so for like for this example right here, right, the file that the YAR rule is looking at, because that's what we're passing, we're passing a file to the YAR to, to investigate. Um, text string one, so it has to have smart and cleanup and long run in the file somewhere, like in the strings, right? So that's what this YAR rule is. There are keywords. Um, these are the YAR keywords. By the way, this is um, YAR read the docs.io. Um, if you want to, I'll put it in the description below. Uh, but we've got our keywords here. So basically, you can't use these keywords um, because, you know, they're restricted, right? If you put them between parentheses, um, quotes, I mean, I bet you you could use it for a pattern match. Uh, but you can just see, um, you know, that it's here. Uh, also, interesting uh, to point out, you can do string matching like we just talked about, right, in the example. Uh, but you can also match on hex strings, which is really what um, Florian is doing here, right? So he actually um, uses a hex string 45A here, and then he uses just full text here. Uh, so this is a little bit of the flexibility of a YAR rule. So if you're interested in like where all these YAR rules are and you want to investigate some and, and um, get a little bit more familiar, uh, if you go to github.com slash YAR dash rules, right? So the YAR rules project, um, or you can go to the Twitter YAR rules, which is uh, can be seen here. Okay, so let's look at another example here. We'll do web shells, right? Here's China Chopper, okay? Here is the YAR rule. Let me zoom in a little bit. 
Okay, so again, you're seeing the same kind of format, right? It is, uh, we got the rule name, uh, the metadata who is, you know, this is pretty standard, right guys? Author, date, what it's doing, um, if you want some reference, uh, which we will in a second. Um, so strings, this is basically um, for ASP, and it looks like it's just a straight um, hexadecimal value, right? This is, China Chopper is pretty lightweight. It's like 4,000 uh, uh, bytes, right? It's pretty small. Um, but you can see here, it's looking for this hexadecimal value. I want to point out something right here. Um, these two question marks, these are like basically wildcards. So the hex value here could change. Uh, so it'll accept, it'll match on anything here. Also, um, this uh, value right here is pretty standard uh, convention and regular expression, but basically it'll match on any value between one and 100, okay? Uh, and the condition is if this hex value exists, then it's a match, okay? Uh, this is for ASP. There's a China Chopper in PHP, uh, and it looks like Ryan Boyle here actually did the same thing. So basically, if this hash shows up, then there you go, it's, it's there. Uh, he does reference this FireEye blog, I brought it up here, um, it's, it's good. Um, if you're interested in learning a bit more about China Chopper and why um, the Yara hash actually matches, you could check that out. Um, it's a nice little write-up. Okay, so what is the utility of Yara rules, right? Like we, we typically in the industry talk about signature-based detections like antivirus kind of being antiquated and you want more heuristic-based detections now. Uh, this is David Bianco's Pyramid of Pain. If you haven't heard of it, it's a pretty standard um, tool and concept in the cybersecurity arena. So I, I'd encourage you to Google uh, David Bianco or Google Pyramid of Pain and this will come up. Uh, basically, the higher up you go the pyramid, the more... Um, frustrating you are to threat actors, okay? So um, you could see down at the bottom value, hash values and IP addresses, domain names, these are kind of simple uh, all the way down to trivial. So you're not really disrupting threat actors too much by detecting, you know, um, C2 domains or file hashes and stuff like that. But uh, what I wanna point out here is a couple things. One, as I mentioned earlier, like low hanging fruit you can knock out um, because speed, time is important, right? And speed is of the essence. Um, if you are able to quickly uh, scan and find a bunch of stuff that's really bad uh, on your network based on YAR rules, then you can eliminate that uh, really quickly. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't have to continue to do the investigation and, and fully um, remediate all of the infection and, and totally eradicate all the issues. But it's a, it's it certainly helps you, right? So uh, I just want to point out that it's it's a tool that should be used in conjunction with other incident response type techniques, right? Uh, and if you do um, do some malware uh, reverse engineering, or you find some malware and you want to uh, write a signature for it, the community for writing YAR rules is open to everyone. So anyone can contribute a YAR rule, right? So I definitely encourage you to take a look at it, uh, maybe write your own, maybe play around. Again, it doesn't have to be malware. So you could write a YAR rule that detects um, on some uh, Windows calculator, right? Like look at Windows calculator in, um, you know, a, um, PEID or WinHex or something like that, hex dump, and look at some um, hex values and then write a YAR rule um, that that detects it, right? Just, just to kind of get a feel uh, for that, okay? So I definitely want you to understand what a YAR rule is, what it looks like, who's using it, why you'd use okay, it. so that's gonna do it for this week. Um, thank you so much. I hope you got some value out of it. Thumbs up, uh, hit subscribe if you haven't. We're almost at 9,000, I'm super pumped. Gonna do a big celebration when we hit the 10,000 mark, uh, hopefully here in the coming weeks. All right, until next time, stay secure. <laughs>